Hello everyone and welcome to LA Ram Central filming in a different location. I'm filming in my uh, Arizona room today. Didn't feel like going into the office. Um, going to be a relatively brief, sh brief show. I'm going to cover the Thanksgiving Day games. I'm going to go over what I think about um, the Ram game against New Orleans. And then I'm going to do my predictions again for the upcoming week. And of course I'll end with the Ram New Orleans Saint game. So without further ado... Let me go ahead and um, start with my review of the game last week. Heartbreaking 14 to 10 loss. We had a 10 point lead the whole game. Uh, defense self destructed in the um, fourth quarter. Final seven minutes in particular. It seemed like once the rain stopped, uh, Ryan Tannehill started to do what I feared he was going to do, which was attack our corners. Um, couldn't get pressure on him. I don't know if it had to do with the field or what, but that entire – the last two drives, we just looked completely off our game. So it was a tough loss. Um, many of colorful language came out of my mouth uh, at the end of that game. But once again, guys, I was thinking about this today. We should be sitting at 8-2 and two right now, getting ready to go 9-2 and two or 8-3 and three against New Orleans. We have lost four games because of our coaching staff, and I chalk this one up to our coaching staff as well. How many times did we throw the ball downfield? We had more passes downfield with Case Keenum than we had with Jared Goff. Why are we doing this when Jared Goff is a much better quarterback? I understand it was raining, but he wowed you with the wet ball at Cal Berkeley during his pro day, one of his pro days. So what's the deal? He said he could throw the deep ball. Let him throw the deep ball. That's the situation where if a defender slips, that's when they're going to slip in the rain. You have so many opportunities to go your way, and you're four and five. You're out of the playoffs. I don't care what you mentally think. Well, mathematically, we're not eliminated. We're eliminated. This game officially eliminated us, in my opinion. I keep hearing people say we're still alive. No, we're not. Two teams are coming out of the East, and both will be better than five lost teams. Maybe a 10-6 and six team at worst will, will be one of the two. But due to performance in the conference, we're done. So let's start utilizing Jared Goff and try everything we can for a winning record. Because 9-7 and seven in your first year back at L.A. is infinitely better than 4-12 and 12 or 5-11 and 11 or 6-10. and 10. But we didn't. So... That got frustrating. We were able to run the ball, and like the Detroit Lions game, we abandoned the running game um, for all intents and purposes. The running plays that were – let me rephrase that. We didn't abandon the running game because we ran more than we threw. I, I understand that. But the running plays that were working for us in the first half, we didn't see in the second half. They went to the back end of the playbook. I don't know if they were trying to show that Jared Goff has the entire playbook under, under control, but – once again, we're handing the ball off to Gurley in shotgun as if we have the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. Notice, guys, on the Thanksgiving Day game, how many times did Dallas hand the ball off to Ezekiel Elliott in shotgun formation? Because I watched most of the game and I counted two. We Half of our handoffs to Todd Gurley are in the shotgun formation. He is an eye formation or single back runner run between the tackles, get the ball outside on the, on the counter tray type of running back. And we're utilizing him like he's a Darren Sproles scat back out of the shotgun spread formation. I, the other thing that kills me and the other thing that's hurt us is the kill, kill. I knew after week two, kill, kill meant audible from pass to run. Do you not think the rest of the National Football League has picked up on this? It's time to have a different audible call when you're shifting from pass to run. It's not complicated. They did kill, kill, kill three times last week. They lost five yards every time they went to the kill, kill call. That's not Jared Goff's fault. That's coaching. You can't figure out 10 weeks into the season, your lone verbal audible call to the run isn't picked up on. What are you doing? What are you doing? So I was frustrated with that. I'm going to talk about other things that I'm really happy about. Todd Gurley finally got the breakout run that we knew he would get. 
Um, and I knew I knew Jared Goff would help with that. Um, there's there's three things I really liked from this game. One, the touchdown run by Jared Goff. No one's talking about this in the media, and I don't think anybody picked up on it um, because they suck at their job. But it was real obvious to me. Prior to the run, Jared Goff had pointed out where the safety was, talked to the center. The center then communicated a line change. Jared Goff then pointed out the middle linebacker. Okay. Well, let me start over. He pointed to the middle linebacker first, realizing what gap he had responsibility for, then pointed to the strong safety, then communicated to the center. The center then did a line call, and he sprung free for a big game, which then in turn sprung him free, and he scored the touchdown to put us up. So there was, um, there was that that I was really pleased with. The other thing that I saw from Jared Goff, besides his mobility, was because the mobility really impressed me. I mean, there were times he just really avoided uh, the rush and made made the right throw. But the accuracy that we saw on a lot of his passes, uh, especially the sideline deep balls. So, I mean, I know they didn't throw much. I know he didn't do much yardage-wise. But you, you definitely have reason to be optimistic if you're a Ram fan moving forward. Now, this season may be a loss. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay, this is looking better and better each week. So I'm optimistic that things will get better. But, you know, in the end, obviously, we have to make sure that we're being realistic about what our expectations are of Jared Goff. Because the NFL's expectation, unless your name is Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, if you throw for 134 yards and you look like Jared Goff did your rookie year, you're a bust, you're garbage, you're pathetic, you're a puke. Because you have to throw for 575 yards and 85 touchdowns a game in order to be considered a good quarterback by National Football League analyst standards. Even though guys like David Carr didn't look like that his rookie year, but he was getting wins. And he had, you know, a sexy guy to throw to and, you know, the deep ball occasionally was completed. So that put him in good graces by around week 11, week 14 uh, of last year. Uh, really, it took until then. So... You know, with golf, it's just one of those things. You're just going to shake your head and go, okay, it is what it is. I'm not going to worry about it. But I really liked those aspects from what I saw from Jared Goff. All right, what I want to talk about next are the games. So um, first of all, the Thanksgiving Day games were all phenomenal. I'm not acknowledging the Thursday night game. I don't watch the Thursday night game on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, I will never watch the Thursday night Thanksgiving Day game unless it's the Rams playing or the Redskins Uh I'm not interested. I wouldn't even watch the Browns, who I love in the AFC. They're my AFC team. Or the Raiders, who I also kind of like as an AFC team. Those are pretty much the only four teams I'll watch Thursday night football for. But on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday night, I'm not watching the Browns or Raiders. I might DVR it and watch it later, but I'm not watching it. My focus is always and always will be the Lions and Cowboys Thursday game. So let's talk first about the Lions Thursday night game. Uh, Thursday game. It was a great game. Uh, it was fun to watch. Detroit, for the second time this season, got points at the end of each half, um, and those two field goals were the difference in the game. They won 16-13 because of it. I, I thought they played phenomenal, and, and, and the Lions are proving me wrong week in and week out. Minnesota's proving me right week in and week out. Sorry, gang, but I told you the Browns, the, the, the Vikings would go 6-10. and 10. Um, I don't know if they'll lose six in a row and end up 6-10, and 10. But I definitely think they're going to end up 7-9, 8-8. Eight eight. They're not making the playoffs. The, the Dallas Cowboy-Washington uh, Redskin game was as good as advertised. It was exciting to watch. If you guys didn't get a chance, look for it on, on um, YouTube or something like that and try to watch it because it was such a good game. Uh, unfortunately for my Redskins, they came up short. Um, but it was still a great game. It was fun. It was all the way to the end. It took an onside kick, which... Um, I was hopeful they would recover, but knew they probably wouldn't because the odds are never with you on those. But it was still a great game. They played well, and it was a great ending to a, to a phenomenal Thanksgiving day. Um, I hope everyone, by the way, out there had a wonderful Thanksgiving, enjoyed it, relaxed, had a wonderful day. I know I did. I had quite a few people here, and it was worth it. Uh, I enjoy hosting. I enjoy seeing people, um, and I certainly enjoy cooking, so that made it nice. But it was also fun to just kind of watch football, play football, and kind of do our thing that we always do in this country um, and celebrating uh, a time when Americans were um, appreciative of 
the people that helped us. If you don't know the background of Thanksgiving by now, I, I don't know what to tell you, but it's pretty simple. Uh, a Native American tribe had helped the pilgrims figure out how to farm and harvest on, on the land certain crops that they were struggling with and gave them some pointers. And as a thank you, um, around this time in November, they did a – they welcomed – they they had told the Native American tribe to come to their village. They had a surprise for them. And what they had set up was a feast of all the food um, – that they had helped them grow and, and also, you know, turkey and some other uh, food, food of choice. And it was really a great moment in American history uh, before we were a country. At that point, we were just a colony. Um, but it was pretty cool. So neat little history story there on Thanksgiving. But it, it is a wonderful day, and it's, it's, it's something that I hope everyone out there had a wonderful day. And if you didn't um, – you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully days ahead will be better. As far as the games go this week, um, Arizona-Atlanta, I'm going to go brief with this. Arizona-Atlanta, I don't expect that to be a close game. Um, I expect Atlanta's probably going to roll and probably roll pretty quickly. Uh, Baltimore at home against Cincinnati, another game that I don't know what to expect. The Bengals aren't going to get blown out by anybody, but I won't. I do not anticipate a uh, Bengal victory here. I think the Ravens are going to find um, a way to win as they usually do. Jacksonville's kind of on the cusp, and I think Buffalo's kind of ripe for the pickings, but I'm still going to go with Buffalo in this game. I think it'll be a close game as usual, but Jacksonville ultimately will not be able to pull that one out. Tennessee at Chicago is going to be a roll for Tennessee. Look for DeMarco Murray to have a big, huge day against the Chicago Bears. Cleveland at home against the Giants. The Giants should win this game and, and really solidify and cement their, their number two position in the division and, and position themselves nicely for a playoff run. San Diego at Houston. Uh, I think the Texans have gotten a lot better. Uh, they looked good last Monday night in defeat. And being home, they're tough to beat at home, and San Diego has struggled. So I'm going to go with Houston in that one. San Francisco at Miami. The Dolphins' win streak continues. This is a gimme win for the Dolphins, provided they don't sleep on the San Francisco 49ers. Seattle at Tampa Bay. This is a, this is a tricky one for me. Um, Tampa Bay can beat Seattle, uh, believe it or not. I believe they can. But it's going to take a Herculean effort by Jameis Winston, and I think he's got it in him. I'm going with the upset pick of the week this week, Tampa Bay over Seattle in a close game. But ultimately, I think the Bucks will win. Carolina at Oakland is going to be an Oakland landslide. Uh, the Raiders have proven they could score. The Panthers this year have struggled scoring, and their defense has proven each week that they're getting better and better at stopping the run. New England at the Jets, no Gronk, no problem. Tom Brady's playing. It's over. The Jets are going to get blown out. Kansas City at Denver is going to be a fun game. Um, that's the afternoon game uh, to watch, in my opinion. It's actually the Sunday night game. Um, and it's actually worth kind of watching. I think Kansas City's going to play tough, and I think the Chiefs are going to beat Denver in Denver. Green Bay at Philly, Philly's going to win. Carson Wentz has looked great this year. I know he struggled the last few weeks, but ultimately I think Carson Wentz is going to be the difference in that game as Aaron Rodgers and that defense will continue to struggle as they always do. That's a wrap for the second segment. Third segment coming right up. All right, the New Orleans Saints-Los Angeles Rams game. The experts are picking the Rams to win this game. Um, I would love for them to be right. I don't know how they're going to be right. The Rams struggle against good quarterbacks, um, and they struggle against good receivers. They look great against, against New York. They look great against uh, Miami. Didn't give up a lot of points in those games. In fact, the interception return for a touchdown is what killed the Rams against the Giants. I have a strong feeling that this is going to be a Ram victory. I'm going to explain why later, but let me kind of give the details of the breakdown of this game. Willie Sneed worries me because he plays in the slot most of the time, and he's a dangerous receiver that beats good corners week in and week out, and that's a matchup against LaMarcus Joyner that I actually like. Because LaMarcus Joyner is a little bit better of a cover corner than people give him credit for. And he's played fantastic this year. So I like that matchup. When you step away from that, 
The other thing that struggle that that I'm the thing that I'm worried about is the Tremaine Johnson, EJ Gaines Hill matchup on the other side. We struggle there. We don't do well there. And when you look at this matchup, um, I know Tremaine Johnson's played well this year. He really has. But we're talking an upgrade in quality of receivers. We're talking about artificial turf. We're talking about speed. And we're talking about a quarterback that can throw the ball through a pin needle hole size window. So those are concerns that I have in this game. Defensively, they get pressure on the quarterback. They give up a lot of yardage against tight ends, which I'm going to get to that in a minute. But they've been better at shutting down passing games. And the Rams' Jared Goff really needs to have a good showing here. So I'm, I'm a little concerned on those fronts. But here's why I think the Rams are going to win. The Saints struggle stopping the run. And this is finally Todd Gurley's breathable moment. I think he's going to have a 100-yard day. He's going to have his first 100-yard game of the season. And I think that's going to be key because I don't think he's going to get 100 yards on 25 carries like he should have been getting all year long. He's going to have to get his 100 yards on 18 to 20 carries. And I think he's going to be able to do it because there's going to be enough gashing, gaping holes there for him to hit, provide he can hit him quick. Tight end. Jared Goff, Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby last week had two, had two receptions. One shy of what he's had all year long going into this game. He had three receptions all year long to this point. I look for Ty Tyler Higby in this game to get about four or five passes um, for around 40 to 50 yards and maybe even a touchdown. Kenny Britt will get open and will get his because Kenny Britt's been doing that all year long. I think when you combine those two factors and the fact that the Rams can get pressure up front and get into Drew Brees' face where he doesn't like it and will force the football, those are reasons I think the Rams are going to win. But ultimately, they're going to need at least two turnovers, guys. They're going to need at least two turnovers to put themselves in scoring position. They're going to need a strong special teams game, whether that's connecting on all their field goals or Hecker pinning them in deep. They're going to need a strong performance from their special teams. I would love to say a Tavon Austin punt return for, say, 40 yards or more at one point during the game would help. But he's hit or miss this year, and that's really a tall order to ask. The totality of this game, when you look at it, it's big for the Rams. The Saints and Rams both know they're out. They need too much help at the top to struggle. There's too many teams ahead of them that aren't very good but are better than them with easier schedules down the stretch. I remind people, after New Orleans, we go to, we go to New England. Then we're home against Atlanta. Then we're at Seattle. Those are three losses right there. Do the math. Okay, that's, that's eight losses. We win this one. Actually, that's nine losses. My apologies. That's nine losses. If we can win this one and win at home against Arizona and San Francisco, I know you guys don't want to hear it, but we're talking a seven and nine season. In order to get to nine and seven, they're going to have to steal one of two of those three games. Tall order. I'm hoping for just a 500 season. Okay, I'd love to see 8-8 eight eight in the new home. They didn't have a losing record in their return to L.A. It was too bad they didn't have a winning record, but they didn't have a losing record. So for that to happen, they just need to steal one of those three games and then win the games they're supposed to win. New Orleans, that's a game they're supposed to win. They're both 4-6. and six. They're in a dome. They don't have to worry about weather. This is a should-win game. Arizona, at home, when you've already beaten them in their place, is a should-win game, and God knows San Francisco already was a should-win game. So you've got to win three games you're supposed to win, and you've got to win one of the three that you didn't, that you're not supposed to win. That's a tall order for eight and eight, but that's what I, that's where I'm at. I'm looking at this going. If we could end the season four and two, with with Jared Goff as quarterback, four and three in the final seven games of the season, that's optimism for 2017. And I was corrected. We do have a second round pick uh, next year. We have two fourth round picks, but we have nothing in the first and nothing in the third, which is difficult to swallow. Um, maybe they can do some shenanigans to move that, trade those picks and try to move up, but that's going to be difficult. So all-time series against the New Orleans Saints, the Rams are 40 and 32. Um, 
As the LA Rams, they were 27 and 23, with the 90s being horrendous to the Rams against the Saints. When they moved to St. Louis, they were 13 and 9. Um, and they didn't have any games when they were the Cleveland Browns because the Saints weren't around yet. So overall, the record is 40 32 and 0 against the New Orleans Saints. This is a game the Rams should win. They can win. Their defense has to continue to play well. Jared Goff has to show he can do it. The Rams, it would be nice if the Rams had like a 21 7, 21 to nothing lead or 21 to 3, 21 to 7 lead going into the fourth quarter. Um, because then I think the defense can exhale a little bit and go, okay, even if we make mistakes, the offense is doing what it can. You want a prediction from me, I'm going to say 28-14 Rams. I think it's going to be a win. Uh, I'm scared about this game because this is one of those should-win games, but they could very easily lose it. But I think the Dome is actually going to benefit the Rams more than the Saints because I think Gurley has more speed than Ingram. The Rams are hungry. Goff was kind of hindered by the rain last week. Now he can really cut loose and let fly, and we'll see what happens. But ultimately, I think it's going to be a Ram victory. 28-14 is my final prediction. That is it for LA Rams Central. Signing off, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next week with hopefully the 5-6 and six Rams. Go Rams!